Okay, this question is about electromotive force and internal resistance. Uh, we're using a potato as a, as a cell. So, um, first question is asking you to complete the diagram to show um, how can we set up a circuit to determine the electromotive force and the internal resistance for the potato cell. Now, um, we know that in order to calculate this graphically, we need to plot a voltage over current graph. You can see this on the second part of the question as well. And in order to do that, we need to have a set of data for voltage and, and current. So how do we do that? It's by connecting a variable resistor into, into the circuit. So we can change the resistance and that will change the current and the voltage. So we have to add an ammeter to measure the current and that will be in series of course and then we need to measure the voltage across across the cell so that voltmeter will actually measure the voltage that's coming out of the of the battery of the potato cell after some of it is used on the internal resistance so that value is the one that is available for the circuit the next question is about actually determining and calculating the electromotive force and the internal resistance. So we have this graph and if you remember the electromotive force is given by the y-intercept. Oops. So the y-intercept of the line of best fit that will give me the electromotive force and the gradient of the line of best fit, it will give me minus the internal resistance. So in order to do that, of course, we need to find the line of best fit. So uh, remember the line of best fit is that it doesn't have to go through all the points. Some of the points should be above, some of the points should be below. So I will draw it somewhere there. So therefore, if you look closer, what is the y-intercept? It's 25, 26, 27, 28, something between 0, 28 and 29. So, and these will be the uh, acceptable answers on the mark scheme as well. To 0 0.29, and that will be, of course, in volts. Now, in order to measure, to calculate the gradient, we need to choose two points on the graph. Remember that it doesn't have to be uh, points from the data we have collected, it can be any point on the line of best feed. And also, it's recommended that um, the triangle we're going to use uh, is as big as possible, right, to kind of minimize the error. So, I will go for that point over here, which is actually a point from the from the data we collected, and I will get also that value over there. So make sure you show the evidence of you calculating the graph, the, the gradient, sorry. So just make sure you do your triangle. So we have these values over there. Okay. And how do I find the gradient? Of course, it's y1 minus y2, x1 minus x2. Now, it doesn't really matter if it's going to be y2 minus y1 or x2 minus x1. And it doesn't really matter which one you consider. Um, Point 0.1 and point 0.2, right? So I'll stick with uh, that formula, which is the one you usually see. So I'll just move that part. Here. So, and then let's see what the values are. So that will be 0 0.26 minus 0 
and that will be 0 0.06 minus 0. Point, I forgot this one 0 0.40 Now, look at the, the labels here. The current is given in milliamperes, so that value here has to be multiplied by 10 times power of negative 3. So, if we find this, if we calculate that gradient, so I'm getting something around it, it will be this number, 412 ohms. So, we got the value for the electromotive force, we got the value for the internal resistance, and the next question is about using two resistors in series and two resistors in parallel. You can pause the video and read the question. Now, um, in order to be able to understand that, I'll have to explain a couple of things before we go to the question. So remember that when we have two um, two resistors in a circuit, the voltage of the battery is kind of given, is split into, into these two. Yeah. So similarly, if we have internal resistance, just erase this. So if I have internal resistance, and one resistor in the circuit. Similarly to before, part of it, part of what is provided by the electromotive force, part of it will be given to the internal resistance and the remaining will be given to the resistor. Now, if I have a higher resistor, if I have high, more resistance, if I change the resistor with something that has a higher um, resistance, this will actually drag more energy into into the component so if i have higher resistance this will give me more energy all right so the electrons that are going through this resistor if the resistance is higher that means those electrons they will require more energy to go through and more energy per charge more energy per electron that will be also more voltage all right so higher resistance I will drag more voltage. Now, in this question, I have two combinations. I have one with um, the, the combined resistors. I mean, I mean the ones in series and the one in parallel. Um, a reminder that when the resistors are in series, how do we find the combined resistance? If this is series, it's R plus R. Therefore, the total resistance in series will be 2R. If I have these two resistors in parallel, then the formula changes to that. Therefore, the combined resistance will be 2 over R. And then if I flip those around, the parallel combined resistance will be half of the initial. Therefore, this combination will give me higher resistance um, in total. And as I said before, higher resistance will drag more voltage. Now this is the this is the idea behind this question, right? So you just need to mention uh, a few things to get all full marks. You have to explain first of all that uh, the two resistors in series will end up in a higher resistance than the one in parallel and then there's two ways to explain the rest um, you can say that if i have more resistance therefore it will be less current so in series more resistance will result in less current and of course in parallel I'm going to have lower resistance, lower resistance, therefore more current. And also we know that the formula of electromotive force 
is the voltage that goes out to the circuit, right, the terminal potential difference, minus the voltage that is kind of used on the internal resistance. Now, if I rearrange this in terms of voltage, in terms of the terminal voltage, which is asking us about, then that will be the electromotive force minus the potential difference across the internal resistance. Okay, so how is this going to be affected? How is that terminal potential difference going to be affected? We saw that in parallel, in, in series, if I have a lower value of current, so a lower amount will be deducted from the electromotive force, then it will end up with a higher potential different terminal potential difference. So higher V. Right, so if this is 10 and I subtract 3, I get a total of 7. If I have less current, that value will be, let's say, 2. Therefore, I have a total number of total value of 8. So you see, less current, it will give me a higher terminal potential difference. And of course, on the other way around, if I have more current, then I'm going to end up in um, a smaller value for V. So the question here, explain which, if either of the two arrangements, will lead to a greater value for the terminal potential difference. So therefore, the series one will give us a higher potential difference.